Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse the Lost Planeswalker, and today I'm going to go over my new Indestructible Big Boys deck. So this deck was for the last Back to the Basics video I did that was all about Indestructible. I wanted to build a deck around it, and while there's not a great commander that can really encompass all of what Indestructible is, I've decided to choose Joda the Unifier as the commander for this deck. So there's a couple reasons I chose Joda. Um, so Joda the Unifier is white, blue, black, red, green, legendary creature, human wizard. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So Joda the Unifier basically gives legendary cascade which is a really cool ability and is in particular the reason why i chose him to be the commander of this deck there are more legendary indestructible creatures that are actually good than there aren't uh, in particular there's all of the gods of theros which there's a lot of and having those gods with the indestructibility is all about the theme of this deck so basically you're going to get to play those gods get another legendary permanent onto the battlefield which will help fuel the devotion for this five color deck and you'll have a giant indestructible board that just can't be messed with this is a really interesting concept i think um, I haven't really seen anything else like this. You know, I'm not 100% certain how well it's going to work, but I think there's enough mana pip cards that you can play to really get your deck online every game. Um, and I think it would be actually really, really fun to build and play. So how I'm going to divide up this deck is by going over all of the cards from lowest to highest mana cost because that's the way Joda works, right? You play a card and you can get a legendary creature or permanent uh, because of Joda's ability and for free. So let's start out by talking about the land base real quick. Um, I'm not going to really do a comprehensive land base just because really if you want to build this deck a little differently, then you're going to change a lot of the lands out. You know, maybe you play, play a five color deck, but you only include three of the colors to really take advantage and make sure you can get all those creatures out. I, I wanted to build this deck as a general base so that you could take this and change it if you wanted to. So the two lands I'm just going to suggest uh, right off the bat are Command Tower and the World Tree. Command Tower just taps for one color in your commander's color identity, which is obviously great for Joda. And then the World Tree is an awesome card because it gets any number of god cards right onto the battlefield, which is exactly what you want because the main creature type in this deck is god with 31. Being able to pull all 31 onto the battlefield in a single turn would be amazing. But now let's look into those one drop cards. Starting off with the one drops, we have Ishimaru, Hound of Koda, Ragavan, Nimble Pilfer, and Reyes the Redeemer. These are some great one drop cards. They are all legendary, so whether whether you're playing a big or small spell you're gonna be able to get at least something for one which is really great sometimes you don't have enough one drops in your deck when you're cascading and you just don't get anything so i wanted to make sure there was viable actually powerful targets for you to get next we have scrub fector might soul ring and valentine dean of the veins scrub is a really really powerful card especially in a deck like this which even if your opponent has a spell that can target one of your creatures you can give them hex proof using scrub's ability soul ring is just a no-brainer um, you're not gonna be able to get it off cascade but just getting it is gonna make casting some of these spells a little easier and valentine dean of the vein is a single mana menace lifelink and you can get pests so i thought it was pretty good and then finally you have yoshimaru ever faithful which is probably second only to ragavan in this deck in particular just because all the legendary permanents you're gonna be playing there's almost all the creatures are legendary because you want to be able to hit something so yeah well now moving on let's look at the two drops and first we have arcane signet ashling the pilgrim and babel corrupted observer arcane signet is a no-brainer you're gonna need uh, some mana fixing and this is one of the best mana fixing cards available ashling the pilgrim is an interesting card because you can build up counters on it and then take them off to do a board wipe which isn't going to hurt your board because they all have indestructible and then babel corrupted observer is going to be really great in just being able to cast some of those spells get out more creatures next is chevelle bane of monsters daxos blessed by the sun and denik pious apprentice chevelle is a black and green which is really great death touch he puts bounty counters on things uh, some subtle card draw just kind of a good card daxos is definitely great especially for all of those cards that need white with double white pips 
and we're gonna be able to gain some life and denic pious apprentice gives lifelink and makes it so our opponents can't do stuff in their graveyard and we're not really focused on that but uh yeah pretty good going on we have dorothea vengeful victim amira soul of the accord and goro goro discipline of Risui. Dorothea is one of my favorite cards uh, of all time. Uh, I love it because its ability is very similar to Geist of St. Traff, um, but for two mana you get those 4-4 four, four with flying, and if an attacker blocks you have to sack it, but you can cast it for its disturb cost, and whenever a creature you control attacks, it makes a 4-4 four, four flyer. So, you know, use it to block early in the game, and then attach it to one of your gods, and whenever your god swings, well, you get an extra 4-4 four, four that's attacking. Uh, Mira is going to make some little soldiers, you're not going to get any devotion from them, but you you know, a little token with life link's pretty good. And Goru Goru is going to be great when you want to give those gods that you cascade into haste or other creatures. This is just going to be really helpful in letting you attack as much as you can. And our last two cards for the number two mana pip are Rampant Growth and Tyramet, Chosen from Death. Rampant Growth, obviously, go get that basic land you need, help mana fix, and Tyramet is gonna help us exile cards from graveyards to gain life. Um, just a little thing, but the two mana pips is really the big, big part about this. Um, his devotion to black is gonna make him uh, bigger in the butt, which is just gonna be helpful for blocking as well. Looking into our three drops, we have 16 of them. Starting off, we have Annex Hardened in the Forge, Athreos God of Passage, and Bantu the Glorified. Annex is gonna make us some little satyrs. Athreos is great because if our opponents just want to bounce something back to our hand and not pay the three life well that's really great for us and bantu has menace and indestructible which means when he attacks he's gonna have to be blocked with multiple creatures so that's a uh, that's pretty good next we have bow of nylea capella beloved by the sea and commander sphere bow of nylea is especially good in this deck because we're gonna give everything death touch when it's attacking and it has those two green mana pips which is gonna help give us all that devotion we need capybella beloved by the sea basically gives everything ward one which is really great in commander sphere definitely need some more fix in here but you add one mana of any color of your commander's color identity and you can sack it to draw a card moving on we have eska god of the tree which could be a co-commander for this deck we have hammer of perforos and Heliod Sun Crowned. Now, I want to talk about Eska, God of the Tree, real quick, because that this was one of my other commanders I was really considering when I was building this deck, right? Because you get the enchantment side of it, and you can basically get one creature out onto the battlefield for free every turn, but I just felt it was going to be so slow. Joda basically allows you to get those creatures out that you need, you know, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter whether it's a creature or if it's a, an enchantment or artifact. It just has to be a legendary permanent which is just so much better in our deck because maybe you cast a artifact and a creature while well, you're cascading both times and you're getting four things out instead of just the extra one from Eska. Hammer of Perforos gives creatures haste. We really want that. These indestructible creatures are great, but giving them haste is very, very powerful. And Heliod Sun Crowned, it's just great. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature enchantment. Um, yeah, it's it's really powerful. You can buff up some of your enchantment gods while they sit on the battlefield, and then when it's time for them to swing, well, they're they're already really powerful. Next up, we have Kafnet the Mindful, Clothis, God of Destiny, and Kodama's Reach. Kafnet is not really gonna be the best wise um we want to use this ability to be able to draw a card but um you know having seven cards in hand might not always happen uh, this deck's not really built around that but i did like that aided flying and indestructible um you know help for some blocking so you know maybe you do keep your hand pretty full to be able to take advantage of him next we have cloth has got a destiny it's gonna help us make some mana deal some damage you know just kind of a good creature and then kodama's reach obviously we want to get those basics they don't have to be the same basic so that we can get two different ones that we need to help us out next up we have Palkria, god of affliction ronos the indomitable and spear of heliod Palkria is going to help us make some snakes um basically with death touch which is really powerful for blocking if we don't have all the stuff that we need out onto the battlefield yet we can just exile a creature card from a graveyard and get that snake to help just keep our opponents from swinging into us ronos the indomitable is maybe one of the easiest theros gods to be able to get to trigger because you just need another creature with power four or greater and his ability buffs creatures already so even if you just have one of your one drops out you might be able to buff it up to give it plus two plus zero on trample and 
and then you can attack with him. And then Spear of Heliod just gives everything a plus one plus one, which is really great. In addition, the ability of it is actually really powerful. Destroy target creature that was dealt damage to you this turn. This is going to be able to remove a permanent or keep an opponent from swinging in. And then lastly, at three mana, we have Thassa, God of the Sea. This is going to make a really cool creature because we can scry, but also target creature you control can't be blocked this turn for one in a blue, which is really cheap for a really strong effect. So that's going to be great. You know, most of these gods, they do have these other effects that we really want to take advantage of because they are very, very powerful. So I'm looking forward to taking advantage of those as well. Moving into the four mana slot, we have another 16 creatures. Starting off, we have Biden of Thassa, Afera, God of Poilos, and Erebos, Bleak Hearted. Biden of Thassa is going to help us draw cards, which is very powerful, and maybe get those land drops or hit those other creatures we need. And we can maybe multiple cascade with Joda, which is really strong. Afira, God of Poilos, is another card draw engine, one of my favorites actually. And in addition, it happens on your opponent's turn, meaning that when you pass the turn and you have seven cards in hand, you can draw that eighth card and you don't have to discard it until your next turn if you don't play it. So that's really great. And Airbos Bleak Hearted can be used to draw some cards by paying life. You can sack another creature to give a target creature minus two, minus one, which maybe could kill an opponent's creature or just make it weaker so that, you know, one of yours doesn't die. Moving on, we have Erebos, God of the Dead, Hazaret, the Fervet, and Heliod, God of the Sun. This Erebos can also be used to draw cards by paying two life and one in a black. Hazaret, the Fervet, is kind of a little harder, just kind of like Kafnet. Um, you want to have a certain number of cards in your hand. These two kind of fight each other, so it's not the best, but Indestructible and Haste could, you know, really matter at some point in the game, so I really like it. And Heliod, God of the Sun, gives everything vigilance, which is incredibly strong. Especially with these giant gods, we want to swing, but we also want to use to defend. So being able to give them vigilance is a super good ability. Next, we have Ironus, God of Victory, Leyline, Immersion, and Mogus, God of Slaughter. Ironus, God of Victory, is great. It's going to give all our creatures menace, which is wonderful, especially with Indestructible. We could probably at least kill one or more creatures on our opponent's boards every turn if they decide to block and it prevents all damage that would be dealt to attacking creatures you control which isn't going to really affect most of our creatures but those little guys yeah that'd be helpful to keep them around leyline immersion is a new card from the aftermath of mother machines and it's great because it gives a creature ward two and taps to add five mana in any combination of colors this is a really cool card because if you're able to play it on turn four on turn five assuming you hit all five land drops up to that point you have 10 mana in addition Addition, it can be five mana in any combination of colors so if you haven't cast joda yet cast joda then what do you do cast two you know a one big creature or two little creatures get that cascade this is a very very strong effect and i'm very excited to see a card like this and i am very afraid to play against a card like this and mogus god of the slaughter is going to help those people who aren't playing a lot of tokens um to either lose to life or have to sack a creature so it's pretty good next we have nylea god of the hunt nylea keen-eyed and oketra the true nylea god of the hunt is going to give our creatures trample which is fantastic these big gods have big powers so being able to just trample over is going to help us close out games in addition for a very cheap cost we can buff a creature nylea keen-eyed is going to make spells cost one less specifically creature spells which in our hand all of our gods are even if they aren't creatures when they are on the battlefield so that's going to be very powerful for casting cards and we can reveal cards from the top of our library and put a creature card into our hand otherwise we can put it in the graveyard and oketra true fear has double strike and indestructible and is also going to probably be pretty easy to be able to activate her because getting creatures out is joda's specialty if we cast one other spell and get two creatures and then also cast her that's three but we could also get a fourth so it's very likely you're going to have enough creatures to really take advantage of her next we have perforos god of the forge renata called to the hunt and thassa deep dwelling Perforos is very, very strong because whenever another creature enters, it's going to deal two damage to each opponent. So when it enters and then when Joda cascades, it's going to deal a bunch of damage. Renata, called to the hunt, buffs our creatures as they enter the battlefield, which is very, very powerful. And especially we get those two green pips for the devotion. And Thassa Deep Dwelling can tap a target creature 
and at the beginning of our end step we exile our card creature and then return to the battlefield under our control which is really great now we don't have a lot of creatures that really take advantage of etbs with this deck but you had to include the other thassa uh, she's a little stronger and also for the same five devotion and then lastly we have whip of erebos which gives all of our creatures lifelink in addition we get the two black pips which is super great but that lifelink is going to help us stay in the game and if we have a giant board of indestructible gods we can just swing out and gain you know 20 30 40 life easily and basically be able to outpace our opponents life wise now moving on to five drops there's only 10 of them and you know this is where we max out at you know we have a couple six drops but you know we want to cast these five drops to hit those four drops three you know two one whatever but this is going to be very powerful gods these are some of the bigger gods um abilities are really great here and starting out with a card that's not out yet but is going to be very very good for this deck we have anicthia hand of erebos which has menace and gives other enchantment creatures menace which works specifically well in this deck because we have all of the legendary enchantment gods in this deck but whenever she enters a battlefield or attacks you can exile a target non or enchantment from your graveyard and create a token that is a copy of one of those cards except it's a 3-3 black zombie creature token in addition to its other types and why this is so powerful is if we're playing against a mill deck or if by some way you know our cards get removed from the board we can bring them back with her they might just be three threes but we still get those really amazing abilities those gods are known for so this is a great card it's coming out in commander masters it's actually the lead commander of a deck this is in particular a deck i'm very interested in getting myself the other ones look okay but i'm a i'm a sucker for abzan and i'm uh, very excited to see this so looking at the other five drops we have Kemetra, god of the harvest keneros god of storms and crufix god of horizons Kemetra, god of the harvest basically lets us tutor for a forest or plains every time we cast a creature spell which is going to be super great because it pairs perfectly with joe his ability joda lets us cascade into that creature but then we get to cast it meaning we're going to be able to get two lands with joda on the battlefield every time we cast a creature which is going to help thin out our library make sure we hit the cards that we want and also draw into more of those cards it's just a very very powerful card later in the game keneros is going to help us deal a little bit of damage based on our card draw and crufix god of horizons is really neat because it gives us no max hand size but in addition all the unused mana that we have have becomes colorless meaning if we have a weird amount of mana where we can't really cast too many big things or we don't have any small things to cast we can just stockpile that mana and it doesn't go away meaning that on our next turn that mana is still there so we can use that to then cast some of more big spells using the leftover mana from the last turn or you know just save up a bunch of mana to be able to cast a bunch of things all at once phoenix god of deception perforous bronze blooded and the scarab god are our next three phoenix god of deception is a huge mill commander uh, i actually have a mill deck that i'll link in the description below that i built with him and it's really powerful because gods not only have big power but they have big butts um so we're gonna be able to take advantage of that and maybe we can't kill our opponents by attacking we can tap our creatures and mill them out so you know it's a, another way to possibly win perforos bronze blooded gives all our creatures haste which is super great like i said a couple of times we want to give them haste we want our creatures to be able to attack as soon as they get into the battlefield because they're big and indestructible so i really love that and then lastly we have the scarab god which kind of meshes a little bit you know i included all of the gods from amonkhet because i really liked them the other ones had indestructible and these ones don't but they return back to your hand and we can use them to get good value like the scarab god lets us get stuff back from our graveyard and the last three cards in the five drop slot are the scorpion god timeless lotus and xenagos god of revels the scorpion god is going to help us deal with some creatures on our opponent's boards that are kind of pesky it's going to cost a little bit of mana to do so but we can draw some cards from it so that's really great timeless lotus is sort of a no-brainer it's a little expensive at 20 dollars but it taps for wooberg basically letting us cast joda or any of the other creatures in our deck who require multiple different mana pips and xenagos the reveler is a really strong card that is going to take one of our big gods double its power and then be able to just swing in for massive damage so he's a great god to include and lastly we have two six drops we have athreos shrouded veil and the locust god athreos is going to help protect some of our creatures whenever they might be removed and even if they're put into exile we can return them which is really great because there's some cards that your opponent's going to want to remove but you're going to want to keep 
And then lastly, the Locust God is going to have any time you draw a card, create a 1-1. One, one. Blue, red, insect creature token with flying. And for two blue and a red, draw a card and discard a card. So we're going to be able to just make these little insects by just drawing cards like normal or pay into it. And we certainly do have some gods that really do care about card draw in this deck. So hopefully get into one of those and be able to just take advantage of it. But yeah, so that's that's my deck. Um, this is something that I, you know, was thinking about for a while. Uh, it took me a minute to make this video. Uh, uh, I, I really wanted to make sure I got enough creatures to really balance out all the different mana pips and help you hit that devotion every turn. Because if you decide to build a deck similar to this, you know, I don't want you to build it. And then it's like, well, I got three gods out and, you know, they never worked. You know, and that's kind of one of the reasons I went with Joda. He provides a devotion for every god. Some gods, multiple. And, you know, his ability in having enough small creatures, which is also important, is going to mean we hit those and be able to play all different kinds of cards and get that devotion we need to really swing in with all these different gods you know the base is theros which has some restrictions and that was one of the points i was making in my video is you look at all these really strong gods they have great powers they have indestructible you know they have great abilities but you have to hit that restriction so having a good wealth of cards that you're able to hit whether you're casting three and four drops or your high end five and six drops you know being able to hit those cards that have one or two mana pips on them is really powerful and um makes this deck really strong so yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed um if you want to check out some of my other content please visit my channel i'm gonna put all of the other decks that i made reference to in the description below if you want to check those out that would really help me out if you would consider subscribing i tried to do one deck tech a week uh it's been a little hard recently but i'm getting back into the flow of it and you know i'm gonna try to put out one a week from now on and yeah so thank you so much for watching i hope you have a great day and as always i'll see you later planeswalkers